but I'm sure we've all been from here up to um, Waterloo. And as you know, you normally arrive in one of the little platforms. And if you look up slightly to the mezzanine, there's a sign there saying Medi Center. And they've got these at most of the stations now. And they're a sort of instant walk-in doctor's shop where, for a price, you can get pretty much everything short of an operation. <laughs> and I was there the other day getting a hepatitis A vaccination top-up. Well, it's a pretty marvellous thing, inoculation, when you think about it, by introducing to the body a small part of the disease that we're trying to prevent. The body, by getting its retaliation in first, uh, prevents a larger outbreak of the same disease happening. Well, the day started off brightly enough, but they had a Daily Mail in the uh, waiting room there, which I started to read, and pretty soon I was in a blind fury of what the moral decay we see all around us. It was page after page of it. Husbands love ratting on wives, wives stripping at hen parties. <laughs> hen parties. Not us girls. No. <laughs> the, West, the Wessex women that weren't disturbing Ryanair. <laughs> Disturbing Ryanair captains, <laughs> captains canoodling with the hostesses, hostesses scamming the booze. Well, the booze will be the downfall of us all. And of course, in between all the vicars and knickers, <laughs> property prices were crashing all around us. So as smoke was coming out of my ears, I got to thinking, why can't we inoculate the moral body in the same way as we can inoculate the physical body? In other words, in the same way that the, we can introduce into the physical body a, a small dose of the, the, the disease that we're trying to prevent, surely if we practice sin, but in a minor way, we can prevent major versions of the same sin happening. So I decided to become a, a, a practitioner <laughs> in the art and science of sinning <laughs> to, take the, to take the Daily Mail challenge <laughs> and to live a sinful life, uh, but for the best of intentions. Now, next we come on to greed. And nowadays, bankers are the big bad greedies. And a banker used a small part of his enormous bonus to buy a beautiful new Bentley. And he was driving along and parked it. And he opened the door, and just then a big red bus came along and tore the door clean off its hinges. He started crying, and the policeman arrived. And he said, oh, no, no, my beautiful new Bentley. And the policeman said, excuse me, sir, it's worse than that. Your right arm is still a <laughs> And so the man said, oh, no, no, my beautiful new Rolex. <laughs> but it's not just the bankers who were at it. There were two fishermen and a beefy oarsmen out in the Solent one day, out there rowing around, fishing, not catching much when Jesus walked over from cows and joined them in the boat. <laughs> when they recovered from the shock, the first fisherman said, Jesus, you can see my legs in, in real pain ever since I trod on a mine. Can you heal it? And Jesus said, of course, my son, and touched the leg and picked up his crutch and threw it in the Solent, and then all of the pain just disappeared instantly, and he was cured. And the second, the second fisherman with very thick glasses said, Jesus, Ever since I can remember, I've had terrible eyesight. Can you cure my eyesight? And Jesus said, of course, my son. Touched the side of his head, picked off, picked off his glasses and threw them in the solent. And then for the first time in years, he could see clearly. And Jesus turned to the beefy oarsman. And the beefy oarsman put his hands up and says, don't touch me, I'm on long-term disability benefit. <laughs> Gluttony, and you know what they say, there's nothing wrong with gluttony as long as you don't overdo it. <laughs> and every bathroom has its scales. Ours has two, his and hers. <laughs> a visit to a bookstore will reveal a whole sections on counter gluttony or, um, or, or dieting. Um, yeah. Do you know what they say? If you want to get depressed, wear yourself in grams. <laughs> I'm as bad as else. I pull on half a stone at Christmas and I can't seem to get rid of it. I've tried everything short of diet and exercise. <laughs> but it can be fun. I was in the pet shop the other day buying a bag of biscuits for my daughter's Jack Russell Little. 
And the woman behind me in the queue said, oh, you haven't got a dog, I'm feeling mischievous. So I said, no, I'm going on the Bonio diet. <laughs> So, so she said, um, is it any good? I said, well, yes, it's the perfect diet. All you have to do is fill your pockets with bonios, and every time you're feeling hungry, you just feed one or two. And she said, oh, that doesn't work. And I said, well, yes and no. Last time I lost two stone, but I ended up in hospital with, with, with drips and tubes all over me. She said, from food poisoning. So I said, no, no, I stepped off the pavement to sniff an Irish setter. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got, I'm sorry to say this, but we've all got to drink a little more. Cheers. Cheers. And we've all got to put on a little weight. Now, now it, he it helps to be married. A single woman comes home and sees what's in the fridge and goes to bed. A married woman comes home, sees what's in bed and goes to the fridge. <laughs> I joined the gym in Livingston recently, and they've, they've got a new machine there. I only lasted an hour. I felt sick. But the machine's great. It's got Kit Kats, Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> Next, um, we, we seem to go from one extreme to the other. The next one is anger. Uh, but I rather prefer the King James version, which is uh, wrath. Anger is something quite mild one, f one feels if someone mentions words like Gordon Brown or uh, <laughs> the train's late or uh, you get a parking ticket, but wrath sums up a, a measure of magnitude. Mm. And when I was writing this Byron book, uh, which is for sale later, uh, when I was writing the Byron book, I was staying in Gibraltar um, with the governor and Lady Fulton, and we were staying in, in a building called the convent, which is really like a government's house, governor's house in uh, Gibraltar. And next to it is King's Chapel. And uh, Gibraltar is still largely a garrison town, and the congregation is largely military, and the chaplain is military, an army chaplain. And during the sermon, he told the story of how in the Troubles, uh, he was posted to, uh, he was in South Armagh, and as a part of this Ministry of Defence outreach pro program, um, all the chaplains were sent to different denominations' uh, sermons. And he happened to get seconded to one of the pre Free Presbyterians, which was run by Paisley at the time. And Paisley was, in fact, in charge of um, this particular service. And Paisley was in his most hell and damnation mode, quoting Romans 4, the bit about the weeping and the wailing and the gnashing of teeth. And a brave man in the front row put his hands up and said, but please, Dr. Reverend, what happens if you have no teeth? <laughs> and Paisley, without missing a beat, drew himself up and said, teeth will be provided. <laughs> Next, we come on to lust. Ah, oh, yes, I remember it well. <laughs> I agree with Lord Chesterfield that with sex, the pleasure is momentary, the position ridiculous, and the expense damnable. <laughs> Later, Christians realize that the brain is an organ that needs a lot of blood, and therefore men have two organs that require a lot of blood. <laughs> But as many a wife has noticed, there's only enough blood for one at a time. But that's what she keeps telling me. What did I say? And lastly, we come on to pride. And at first it's hard to see why the... Uh, Pride should be such a big sin. I mean, one can be proud of one's family, one can be proud of one's country. The London Olympics next year are supposed to boost national pride, although at $20 billion, it might have been better value to write Yabu sucks to Germany on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Woody Allen was proud of his pocket watch because his grandfather sold it to him on his deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> And that um, brings us to the end of the experiment. I hope you agree that um, you'll practice a little bit of sinning to save the world, <laughs> to save your souls. 
and more importantly, to make a, a, a contribution to the moral regeneration <laughs> of the human race. Thank you very much. <laughs>